What's up everybody? Welcome back to another video journal. I'm the Zim. This is where I talk about everything that went down in my musical and artistic journey in the last week and including life events as well. Today I'm back at my rehearsal space where A-Rock and I rehearse. Talk about more about the Zim and A-Rock in a minute. But um, I wrote down a bunch of stuff this week. This is actually my second time trying to do this. I recorded it yesterday and I did it outside and it was way too noisy. I was cl too close to a street and it was way too noisy. So I thought I'd give it another shot. So I'm about 20 minutes or so. I have a lot of stuff to get to. And the first thing I want to talk about, which kind of affects us all, is just my reaction to the election that happened this last week with um, our new president we're going to be having, President-elect Trump, and I don't really know where to start with this because it could I, it could be an hours and hours of conversation, which I've already had with people surrounding the events. Let me try to highlight some of the things I've been thinking about and feeling. And basically, the bottom line for me is when I woke up Wednesday morning to find out Trump was president, it did not leave me feeling confident about my life and my um, well-being isn't the correct, the right word, but my um, ability to have uh, as good of a life, I guess. I can't think of the right word. There's a word I'm trying to think of, but um, it just made me worried about what's to come for our country and the future of our country. And I obviously did not vote for Trump. I voted for Clinton. And um, I thought... Well, anyways, that's a whole another story, I guess, in general. But in general, I'm a Democrat. I always vote um, Democratic because I, at this point, from what I've seen about the Democratic Party, and it aligns more with my ideals as a person, and my ideals tend to be more along the lines of how can how can whatever policies happen help more the greater, more people, and I feel like at most of the times I feel like people that vote Republican, I feel like the Republican Party usually tends to be more about how can it help me as opposed to how can it help the greater the greater community. And so that's why I tend to vote Democratic and um, that's why I voted for Hillary this time is because I um, believe that if this the Democratic Party stays in power, more people will be helped by the policies that are made than by what Republican policies tend to be. Um, and that's just my belief. I think people believe, obviously people believe the opposite. People believe that Republican policies will help more people um, and, and such things like that. Um, this isn't going exactly how I was thinking about it, but some of the, the, the ways that I've been thinking about this election and what's been going on for me personally has just been um, I'm, I'm fairly upset with the way our country is reacting to the election I, I'm upset with the people that are I'm upset with the people that are upset with the election um, and how they're protesting and how they're doing that thing and I believe in protest I believe protesting is one of the most American things that we can do and I believe it's a good thing to do I believe stating your mind and, and, and stating your opinions and being adamant about it and taking action toward that is important to do. However, I do not believe in rioting and I do not believe in, in, you know, fighting hate with hate. And that's the problem. A lot of, you know, for me personally, one of the problems I have with Trump as my representative, as someone that represents me as an American, is I never liked the way that he represented himself during the campaign trail and was... Um, someone who made fun of disabled people, made fun of, you know, talked down to women and, and was not respectful to women. And the list goes on and on. You know all the things that I'm talking about. The, and so when I woke up in the morning of the election and it happened, found out that he was my president, it made me upset. It made me almost nauseous, mainly because there's I can't take that back. And I the way that... I can be seen as an American because of who is representing me made me uncomfortable and and kind of sick to my stomach and um and, and just disappointed in general because that's not who I am as a person I don't I'm not that way I don't 
you know, want to make fun of people with disabilities. I don't want to put down women and, and objectify women and, and, and uh, along with the a whole slew of other things as the way Trump acted during his campaigning. Um, and so it just made me upset that that's who was re representing me as an American. I, I don't see that. Um, and the other part about it is whether or not, if he ends up being that same person, whether it was tactics to get in the, the office or not, and if he ends up being that same person from here on out, um, the, the, I don't know, we don't know until it happens. There's, you know, the light that I could see from all this is that historically what I've been told is he's been a staunch Republican or Democrat. And so I could see him kind of stirring the pot for both parties. I could see it being a place where he forces our country to work together more if we can get there. Because the problem is that it's causing more of a divide. There's been more and more of a divide in our country over the years um, in politics and it's just and it's just there's more and more extreme ism going on and and uh, I don't know obviously there's this conversation can go on and on for a long time a couple just a couple other points I wanted to bring up was I don't like the fact that how many people that are angry and racist and bigots and just just those types of people align themselves with Trump as well it's like, that doesn't make me feel comfortable. It's like, whether or not Trump is that kind of person, I don't know. But people that are that way are aligning themselves with Trump. And so when I hear people that voted for Trump because of a single issue, maybe they, they really don't like big government, so they're trying to vote somebody in that doesn't represent big government, like it's a businessman or something. Or if they're voting on party lines, if they're voting because he's a Republican and believe that he may do something in the realm of abortion or things like that that people can't vote re democratic for because of their religion or whatever they vote republican for those reasons even though those people are good honest loving people yet they voted for this person and in my mind they also voted for the people that are hateful and align themselves in that kind of hateful way so it just I don't think enough people are awake and aware of what their actions do, you know, but it's, but it requires them to look outside of themselves and go, what am I doing that affects more than just me? And that's the problem. And that's what I started this conversation with was the fact that I try to make my actions help the many rather than just myself. So at least that's, that's what I try to do. I try to think about that. Maybe I don't always succeed at it, but that's what I think about often. Um, so that's enough with the election stuff. I'm, there's plenty more that I can talk about that I've been talking about to my coworkers and other people in my life. Um, but I didn't write it down, so it's not. it may not have been as clear as I've been thinking about it. But those are some of the ideas I've been thinking about. So, I don't know. It just, it is what it is now and we'll just have to make the best of it. And I just hope everybody can lead with love through this process. You know, think about their actions and what are they doing and how are they reacting to what's going on. Are they reacting violently and with anger? Or are they reacting with, with rational thought, love, compassion, and trying to figure out the best way forward from here on out? And that's what I encourage you to do is just lead with love. Something that I've been saying for a while. I'm going to get to the art and music now that has been going on in the last week. And I'm just going to go from, I'm going to go in reverse order that I wrote down. I've been... Well, first thing I should mention, I don't know, I'll just go in random order as I think of things. The The main thing, the first thing, Jam of the Week. I actually do have a Jam of the Week this week, and it's a band. It's a non-local band, actually. I'll link it up. They're called First Aid Kit. They're from Sweden. They're like a female duo, folky country sound. So check them out. I'm digging on it. I just I found out about them a few days ago, and I just downloaded their music today off of iTunes, actually. they I couldn't find them on Bandcamp, so I went the iTunes route. So check them out. I dig it. You know, I found them through Pandora, and one of the bands that came up on the Pandora station that they were on were bands like Fleet Foxes, which you should know well, being from Seattle or being a Seattle band. So there's that. So what's your jam of the week? I'd love to know what your jam of the week is. So post it in the comments of this video. Let me know what your jam of the week is. And um, 
yeah, keep it rolling. Expose me to some new music. I hope hope I've been exposing you to some new music. So let's do that. Um, let's see. I've been working really hard these days at build, trying to build up the Facebook numbers for the Word on the Street page. So if you can take a moment, the, in the description of this video, I'll have the link to the Facebook page. I'm at like 925 right now, basically. So I'm like 75 away from 1,000, which would be great to break that 1,000. Um, and it's all grassroots. I'm not paying to have likes on my Facebook. So I really want people that are somewhat associated, like people like you and people that actually listen to the podcast, to go like the Facebook page to help me build those numbers because social proof is one of the things it's called. The more numbers I can have on there, the more I'll be taken seriously. And in turn, the more this these artists that I'm helping, trying to help out, will be taken seriously. So if you could do that for me, that would be awesome. Um, oh, okay. So the next thing, I'm just going to work through these things. I'm, like I said, they'll be in some random orders. But this next one I wanted to mention... Well, first, let's jump, since I'm talking about Word on the Street, I might as well stay on that. Last week on Word on the Street, we had um, Cast on Crooker. Again, he was the second time he's been on. He released a new album, so we wanted to talk about his new album. And it was a great conversation because we talked about things like Pandora, which I mentioned earlier. But we also talked about um, what it means to have a PR company represent you. And we got a really good deep dive on that whole concept of using a PR company, what it's like for him, what he learned and what he's, you know, what he'll do going forward. And hopefully you can use some of those tools and some of those ideas for your projects and you'll help you grow and learn. The, um, and that's really all on the this uh, episode of Word on the Street, or last week's episode of Word on the Street. One thing that I'm going to be working on right after I finish recording this is I'm going to redo the intro. I haven't been happy with the way I, pr I delivered the intro. Basically, which I've been saying, I'm in promoting the new the podcast as a listener supported podcast so and there's three ways to do that um itunes reviews which i haven't had for about a month so if you could go and leave a review star rating review and subscribe to the the podcast on itunes that'd be great the second thing is actually donating to the podcast i have a donation button on we're on the street or wotspodcast.com the donation button and the third thing i've been pushing is the likes like i just mentioned earlier so I, I made an intro with those things, and I don't like the way I delivered it. It's, it's kind of too zany for me. I'm not really that kind of, whoa. Give it, a, it just kind of has too much energy behind it, and I, I don't like it, so I, I want to redo it to make it sound more natural. So that's the goal. That's what I'm doing right after this, my next thing. Um, so that's that. Um, we're on the street. So hopefully you had a chance to check it out. Go check it out. Listen to it. Let me know what you think. Um, I'd love to hear from you. I always want to hear from you about the... I, I would love it if the podcast could turn into a conversation. If there's ideas that come up on the podcast that inspire you to actually want to talk about more, let's do it through the social networks. Let's do it on the Facebook page of the Word on the Street. We're on uh, Facebook.com slash Word on the Street Podcast and places like that. So let's check that out. Um, I'm still trying to sell my clutch. I have nine left still. Here's a big stack. Nine clutches. I still have these Seahawks clutches, these 12th man ones. Go Hawks, beat the Patriots last week. That was awesome. I got one of this um, Sugar Skull clutch left. I got, so the 12 also comes in green. I have five of these, I think. No, I have two of these or something and five of the white 12s. And then I have one all black one left. So, and they're all in the Etsy. If you want to hook up with the Etsy, go. I'll put the link in the description. So, Go to Etsy, check them out. I'd love to sell all those before I move to San Diego. Then I'm selling them for 50 bucks each, and um, that's been discounted from 120, so over half off. So check it out. Go grab one if you would. That'd be awesome. Help me out a lot. You don't know how much it would help me out, and you would get something cool. You, it could be a gift for somebody. But anyways, I'm not trying to sell you too much. I just want you to know what's going on. Um, so this last week as well, I managed to publish a bunch of photo sets i published two photo sets six bands total um last week i told you about the whitney manger massey ferguson annie ford band show i went to well i finally published those photos i'll link them up check them out let me know what you think share them with your friends if you like them and then i also did something that i don't 
do, I haven't done really, and I'm hoping to do more of, actually, and I will be doing more of once I get to San Diego, but I was looking through my event pages, or, yeah, events on Facebook, like there's the event section of Facebook, and unfortunately, it's really bad. The discovery aspect of the events thing on, on Facebook is really disappointing, and that's kind of slowed down on my recommended shows because it's been really hard to find all the shows that have been going on, so it just sucks. But anyways, that's besides the point. I went to a show at Barboza, and um, I saw tinfoil and tapes, tape stacks, and these people here. And I'd say it was a good show. It was a good show. I did not go leave the show with my discovering my new favorite band or anything like that but it was enjoyable all the bands were good quality music i took photos of all of them i took videos of all of them so you can check out the videos i'll probably you probably just saw videos i'll probably splice in videos in this um this video so there's that but i took photos of all of them and i managed to publish those right away and i'm thank big ups to take um these people here for resharing the photos and the video I took so that's important I need you guys to actually reshare the stuff I'm creating because it does it's it's good to put it out there obviously but it's up to you to push it out more and that's the only way like with everything all your friends that are doing cool stuff in the scene make sure you push it out more um and then some of those you know a related idea to that is um well one thing I put down here was I wish I could be an artistic developer I wish people would come to me and ask me Maybe, maybe at some point down in the future, um, especially musicians, will come to me and ask me what they could do to improve their thing they're trying to do. Because, um, you know, going to the show, going somewhere I've never, I don't know anybody on these, these, these three bands that I saw. And I looked at it with a critical eye and I said, they're good and there's things that I think they could work on to be even better. So, um, I'm not going to say those things because I'm not about, um, at this point I don't feel comfortable just kind of bringing down the scene in any way I just want to promote the scene because there's what I know is there's something for everyone and somebody something that I may not think is the most awesome thing in the world somebody else might so I just want to put that out there for somebody to discover and go that's my favorite thing now so even though th some of this music and some of the stuff that I'm supporting through we're on the street and my videos and all this stuff may not be my most favorite things, but I just want to support the scene and put it out there. I mean, I do draw lines, you know, if I feel like they're just terrible, I won't. Um, like, it usually has to do with um, kind of musical, musicianship type stuff. If they just feel like they're not even ready to be playing live in front of people, that's where I usually draw the line. But style-wise and nuance in there, yeah, you never know. It's 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 all sub subjectable. That's not the right word. Subjective. Um art is subjective right so I don't want to draw too many lines before I give people a chance so um, there's an idea I wanted to bring up for you if you would be willing to help me out basically is what can I do better um, what can I do to make these video journals better what can I do to make the podcast better has I have I touched on something that you're like you did that one time but you haven't ever done that again could I do something better in that round I have about two minutes left so we're gonna have to wrap it up soon but let me know Put it, you know, private message would be great, but you can put it in the comments. Let me know what I could do better to help support the scene, help support you, and help and make this more entertaining and something that you will want to come back to and watch again. Um, the last thing I'll mention is I believe the scene thinks that I'm supporting a different part of it. Um, I believe with the podcast, with these video journals, with everything I'm doing, I believe. People hear it and see and think about it, but they go, oh, that's for some other part of the scene. Because what I've noticed is we tend to get in our little pockets. And what my goal is to kind of reach across these scenes and bring it all up together and go, look at the big umbrella of the Seattle music scene. So you and your bands are definitely part of this conversation. This isn't for just the garage rock bands or the indie rock bands or the funk bands or the, you know, the different you know electronic type bands this is for all of us to come together to um to show off what we're doing the last thing i'm going to say today is make sure you come to december 16th the skylar cafe the zimini rock uh sea lab in the kettle black mountains and tunnels chemo meraki we're all playing a show december 16th it's going to be awesome and this has been video journal 10 130 and next week on 
Word on the Street is going to be Season of Strange, so get ready for that. So, until next week, peace out.